Good evening, everybody. It's Fertility Talk Live, and today we are, this evening, sorry, it's 8 o'clock, and we are doing Fertility Talk Live um, on Facebook. So we normally don't do it on a Thursday evening, but this week we are actually going to try Thursday evenings. Um, so we're going to see how many people are joining us. If you're joining us today, we're talking about what causes female fertility problems. And we are talking to Dr. Yokes. Um, I hope I pronounced it properly, doctor. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I know they, they call you Dr. Yokes, am I right? Yes, they call me Dr. Yokes. My name is Nolu Yolo, but it's been shortened as Yokes when I'm growing up. So I seem to have carried that name through with me. Okay, great. Um, so Dr. Yokes is from the KZN, Vital Lab KZN. And um, we're very happy to have you here, very excited to chat to you. And it's a great topic to our followers on Facebook. We normally do the Instagram live um, in the evenings, but we're going to do, we've got lots of followers on the Facebook page. So guys, if you have any questions for doctor with regarding infertility or reproductive health, please send us, put it in the comment section, and I'm sure she'll be very happy to answer. And if she can't, she'll, um, she'll leave her details and you guys can contact her then. So doctor, please um, introduce yourself to the audience. Who are you, where are you from? Okay, good evening everyone. My name is Nolu Yolo Situ. I'm originally from the Eastern Cape, but I now work in KZN, I work with Vital Lab, which is based in Umshanga. Okay, and, and, and can you tell us about what it is that you do there? Oh, well, I'm, I'm a gynae, and then I, I see females, but now with uh, Vital Lab or with the infertility as the main uh, topic of the day, we tend to see women that are struggling to fall pregnant. Okay, great. Then we can so, see them, we operate on them, and then we also exclude any other gynecological problems that they might have. Awesome, awesome. So our topic again, as I say, is what causes female fertility problems? Um, it's, a, it's a bit, there's so many women out there that deals with infertility, that's dealing with infertility. Um, but the problem with infertility is that they never know when when is the right time to actually um, not go to your GP down the road and actually go and see a fertility specialist or, or a team that actually deals with infertility and also when to actually go and see them. So our first question to you is, please define female infertility. Okay. Um, just um, before we start, I would just like to say that um, you know that you've got infertility when you've been trying to fall pregnant and you are not using any form of protection. That is, you are not on contraceptives and you're not even using condoms. Now, we define infertility, we group it into ages. If you are less than the age of 35 and you've been trying to fall pregnant for about a year, then you can classify yourself as having infertility. But if you are 35 years and above, you only need to wait for six months before you can say, hey, I've got infertility. Yeah. It's, it's actually very interesting why we let young women uh, wait longer and older women, we tend to say they must move fast. This is based on the fact that when you are younger, you fall pregnant much quicker than the older women. So that's why we want to give you at least a little bit of longer time to fall pregnant. Yeah. And uh, just women, the other question that someone might ask, what are my chances of falling pregnant per cycle? That means per menstrual cycle. If you are under the age of 35, your chances of falling pregnant, it's about 15 to 30% yeah. per cycle. And then over a year, about... 80 to 90 percent of women would have fallen pregnant if there are no problems then that's when you start seeking help and then the other thing that i just want to highlight is that we've got primary and secondary infertility primary yeah. infertility refers to a woman who has never fallen pregnant who has never had a positive pregnancy test in her life so that woman is classified as having primary infertility Whereas a woman who has fallen pregnant before, regardless of how that pregnancy ended, 
if she can't fall pregnant now, she'll be classified as having secondary infertility. Wow. I actually never knew that. Well, I actually thought like you would you actually have to when you once you have a baby, um sorry, you once you 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 um you only get classified as having secondary infertility um because you've had a baby, basically. And even yes. you it's even if you no. you know you've miscarried and so forth. Wow. Yeah, so that, that would mean if the pregnancy has ended up as a miscarriage, if the pregnancy has ended up in a, as an ectopic, then that pregnancy is classified as a pregnancy. So when you can't fall pregnant, you have secondary infertility. Wow, okay. So the topic of the day is what are the causes of infertility? Right. I'm so right. sorry about my dogs. <laughs> sorry, guys. It's in the evening. It's at home. I don't have control. Well, they are just telling us they're, they're there. So, what are the causes of infertility? In our South African setting, the most common cause of infertility is cubal blockage. Mm. That's the common cause that we'll see. And then uh, I'll just list the causes and then we'll go into each cause at length. Yeah. Then we've got the second problem will be that of failure to ovulate that is an ovulation whereby a woman fails to release an egg each month when a woman menstruates it doesn't necessarily mean that an egg has been released okay yeah. so because people would say that i menstruate every month so i must be ovulating and every yeah. month all right then the other cause will be a structural problems involving the uterus involving the fallopian tubes and one of the common causes of that is something called endometriosis. And then there will be causes like, un well, it's not a cause. It's usually what we call the elephant in the room, whereby you've got unexplained infertility. That yeah. means you've looked at both the woman and the partner, and there is no cause that we can identify. So we classify the couple as having unexplained infertility. Now, let's just go back to tubal factor infertility. That means blocked fallopian tubes. Now, fallopian tubes, the common cause of blocked fallopian tubes is infection. Hmm. So if a woman has had a sexually transmitted infection, there are high chances that she might end up with blocked tubes. Okay. The flip side to this is that most women do not even realize that they've had a sexually transmitted infection until they have a problem with fertility. The other cause of tubal blockage will be previous surgery. So when you have adhesions forming and they tend to distort the anatomy. Endometriosis can also lead to pelvic adhesions and leading to blocked tubes as well. Yeah. And then um, when it comes to an ovulation, which by far is also one of the commonest causes that we see. An ovulation, there are various causes of an ovulation. We'll just start off with um, the lifestyle. Mm. Weight is one of, or let me call it obesity. When you are yeah. overweight, sometimes you don't release an egg when you menstruate. We look at the age. The unfortunate thing about women is that um, we are born with a set number of eggs. And sometimes the eggs, they age before us. Yeah. And each time we menstruate, we're losing the eggs. So by the time we reach 35, there is an accelerated loss of those eggs, which is why from the age of 35, it's harder to fall pregnant than yeah. in the twenties. And it's the good eggs that we lose, hey, before then? Yes, <laughs> because now the eggs that will be remaining will be the eggs that might lead to chromosomally abnormal babies. That means babies that might be born with uh, some genetic factors. And then we've got uh, one of the commonest causes of failure to release an egg when you menstruate, which is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. Thyroid disease contributes to failure of ovulation. 
if a person is stressed, which is why we always say that stress and pregnancy, it's like east and west. So the two, when you're trying to fall pregnant, try by all means to minimize stress. Yeah. And then we talk about um, people that have what we call premature ovarian insufficiency, or also known as yeah. premature ovarian failure. That can happen genetically. That can happen because of an underlying autoimmune disease. That can happen because a person has had some chemotherapy or cancer treatment. That means chemotherapy or even radiation. Regardless of when you had it, you might have it when you were younger, you might have it during your reproductive years, it, the effect mm. on the ovaries is still the same. And yes. then um, other causes might be tumors in the brain or mm. any other drugs or any other medication that we take that increases the production of prolactin. For example, there are depression medication that people use like Prozac or Citalopram, what it does, it causes the increase in the prolactin level. And when the prolactin is high, a woman will not release an egg each month. Some women will not even have menstruation. Wow. Okay. Well, um, so our next question, that, that was quite a lot I, I've never heard before. I mean, I've done so many of these talks, but I actually never knew that those things could affect um, you know, your fertility. So thank you for that, Doc. Um, what are the most, what are the signs of your female infertility? Or, or are there some common signs that you would see? Well, I would say if a woman has got menstrual problems, then chances are you might struggle one way or the other with inf in, in, in infertility. What do I mean by menstrual problems? If a woman, some people do not start having periods in their life and they are happy and um, until they want to have children, they start wondering, why am I not falling problem? The fact that you haven't had menses should raise flags about fertility. Yeah. If you have irregular periods, you see them, you don't see them, then it also tells you that, so mainly, the one sign you can pick up is around the periods. That's all. There is yeah. nothing else. Unless you've got endometriosis. Now, with endometriosis, you might be having pains, severe pains with your menses. You might be having pains when you're having intercourse. That means when you're being intimate with your partner. Then that should also somehow point you to endometriosis, which could also be, is one of the causes of infertility. Well, oh, okay. Is there anything else, doctor? Well, it, it, it's just the pains and the menstruation. Yeah. Well, some people then, if you've got structural problems like um, a huge abdomen, which is as a result of fibroids, yeah. we often say that fibroids on their own, we don't classify them as a cause of infertility. It just depends where they are located. But if you've got a, a, an abdomen that's like you feel like a pregnant woman, and yeah. you are told you've got fibroids, then there is no way you can fall pregnant with such huge fibroids. Wow. Okay. Um, do contraceptives affect um, your fertility? Wow. Thanks for that question. I forgot to mention that. Contraceptions on their own, they do not cause infertility. However, yeah. if a woman has used DEPO, that is the injectable contraceptive, they just cause a delay to return to fertility. So you cannot say just because you're taking contraception, then you will end up with infertility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and I, there's a question that I actually haven't had, that I don't have on my list, but it's something that I commonly get asked. So I hope you don't mind me asking this, is how long after you have taken contraception, how long after you have come off your contraceptives, um, would it be that you should for conceive or maybe even consider going to see a doctor because nothing has happened? Okay. As I've mentioned, the injectables, you can wait for up to a year from your okay. last injection before you start getting worried. But with if you've used a loop, whether it's the medicated loop or it's the copper loop, 
your fertility should return immediately you removed it you should be okay. able to fall pregnant so you can wait that normal period that you would normally wait like a year just to see what's happening depending on, on on other things so the only contraception that delays fertility is actually the depot okay great um and then to okay we've actually gone through this now the my next question would have been do irregular cycles suggest infertility um, but I think we've actually just covered that, unless you've got something else to say about that? No, I think we've, okay. we've covered that question. Okay. okay. And then what tests are available um, to check your, you know, your infertility? What tests do they do at, at fertility clinics? And do Vitalab offer these tests? Okay. The, the, the first thing a woman with infertility should expect is that um, she will have a history will be taken and a thorough examination will be done on her so as to establish from the history it will guide us as well as to what investigations we need to do. And then um, we will do an ultrasound. What the ultrasound does, it tells us about the shape of the uterus, the ovaries, if there's anything wrong in the ovaries. Ovaries is where the eggs are stored. And then it will also tell us about the fallopian tubes, but we are mainly able to see fallopian tubes on, on ultrasound if they are dilated or there's a problem with them. And then uh, the next investigation that will be done is hysterosalping okra, which we call an HSG. So what happens with an HSG? It's when uh, we inject contrast via the, the mouth of the womb, that is the cervix, and then it will tell us about the cervix itself and then um, the shape of the uterus as well as the fallopian tubes. We, we take x-ray pictures. So as we inject the contrast, we take the x-ray pictures and then they will tell us what's happening. This is done as a day case and this is available at Vitalin. Okay. Then the next thing you can do, if for example, you've seen some abnormality on the cavity, whether it's during the ultrasound or with the HSG, the next thing you will do will be um, a hysteroscopy. That means a camera whereby you look inside the uterus, inside the womb, okay? This can be done in the clinic whilst you're busy chatting with the woman because it's really not painful. There might be a little bit of discomfort for some people, but it's not painful as well. And then what the woman can also expect is that there will be blood tests that will be done. So when we do the blood test, we do blood tests that will guide us as to why the woman is not falling pregnant. Blood tests that will screen for infections, things like HIV, syphilis, hepatitis. And then we often check vitamin D and then check other things that we might need to correct. For example, I've mentioned thyroid disease as a cause of failure to ovulate. And an underactive thyroid does make a woman not to ovulate. And an underactive thyroid might also affect the pregnancy in the sense that it might also cause miscarriages. So we always need to correct the thyroid. We always need to make sure that um, prolactin is also within normal levels. And then we will check for rubella so that if you have never been immunized for German measles, then you can get immunized before we start um, the process of making you fall pregnant. Okay. And then I mentioned the ovarian aging. So one of the blood tests that will be done, it will be a blood test to measure the ovarian reserves. That means the quantity of the eggs that are still remaining but unfortunately it doesn't tell us about the quality of those eggs okay so okay. in most clinics you would find a blood lab available so you walk into a clinic all these things are done you don't have to okay. move from one place to the other to do this test so vital lab does provide that Awesome. That's great. Um, there was one or two questions that we actually received from, from ladies before. And um, one of the questions was, a lady has an ectopic, she's had ectopic pregnancy and she's um, obviously had the, that, that um, she's at, at been removed. Mm -hmm. What is her chances of, con on, of con um, conceiving after having the one removed? Sorry. Okay. We often say that if you've had an ectopic pregnancy, 
your chances of having an ectopic pregnancy in your next pregnancy is about 10%. So that means an ectopic pregnancy will happen because there has been a problem affecting the fallopian tubes. So you can fall pregnant after having an ectopic pregnancy, but you must just be weary that it can happen again. Okay. If it's, you've it's, had both tubes removed, then you, the only way you can fall pregnant is through in vitro fertilization. There's one thing I also need to mention now that we're talking about ectopic pregnancy. Smoking. Women that are trying to fall pregnant or in general, smoking is not good for the fallopian tubes. What the smoking does is it interferes with the muscle of the fallopian tube. Yes, it looks so flimsy, it doesn't look like it's got muscles, but it interferes with the movement of the fallopian tube. So smoking can actually predispose a woman to having an ectopic pregnancy. It's not only the infection. Wow. Okay, we've got one last question is, um, what is the, what would you suggest someone trying to conceive, what medication should they start taking besides the folate? If they've been trying for a long time, what is, what is something else they, that you'd suggest they start taking? It, it's very difficult to just say someone must start taking this because we need to make sure that there is no yeah. problem. So the only, well, not the only thing, it's to make sure that like the vitamin. Uh, Mm. Folic acid is okay and they can supplement vitamin D because surprisingly you would think we are in South Africa, we've got enough sunshine so people shouldn't be deficient in vitamin D. But unfortunately we do find that people have low vitamin D. Talking about vitamin D, it doesn't affect fertility so much in women as, in, as it does with men. But women as well that have got low vitamin D need to be supplemented for, for vitamin D as well. Okay, great. Thank you so, very it's much. A, it's a healthy lifestyle yeah. that we cannot overemphasize. Eating healthy, avoiding being overweight. All right, as we know that being overweight does affect release of an egg with each cycle. And the most important thing before you think about medication is to make sure that there is nothing wrong with you. Yeah. There are a lot of additive medication that we can use to sort of help the eggs, yeah. but it doesn't necessarily change the ovarian aging. You know, we use things like um, coenzyme Q10, we use things like uh, DHEA. Yes, this medication, when you look at literature to try and validate its use, you will find that evidence is quite sketchy, but we still do use them because as the last resort, because women would say, I want to try something before I do this, or whilst I'm yeah. still collecting money for IVF, is there something that I can do? Okay. Well, okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. It's been great talking to you. If anyone has any questions for Doctor, because I now always, once I end the live and then the questions start coming in. So, if you have any questions for Doc, please, you can email it. Doc, if you want to just leave your email address, please. Okay, they can email to yorks, that is Y-O-K-S-S at vitalabkzn.com. Or they can even leave, leave them on the Fertility Solution website on Facebook. I will always look up and then answer the questions via there. Awesome. There. That's awesome. We will we will keep the video up and then you guys can contact her there or you can email her directly and you can also find them on um, Fertility Solutions website as well as they've got their own website, vitalab.com, I think it is. Um, so thank you very much, Doc, for spending time and talking to us. We hope to have you back again soon and do another talk with us. Have a great evening further. Just as, as a, a caution, if a woman doesn't have periods, please go and see a doctor tomorrow. Don't wait for next month. Yes. If a woman is over the age of 35 and has been trying to fall pregnant for more than six months, please go and see a doctor. Awesome. And then if Thank you're you. under 35, over a year, you've been trying to go and see a doctor. Unless you've been told before that you have endometriosis, you have PCOS, then you need not wait. Yeah. You, you just need to say, I'm trying to fall pregnant. Let me go and see a doctor. I've been told I've got this, so I don't want to waste time. Awesome. Thank you very much, doctor, for that tips.
Have a great evening and thank you everybody for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you so much for inviting me, Leanne. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Doc. Bye. Bye.